Hello, leader, and welcome back to the Fierce Factor podcast. I'm your host, Kaylee Lindholm, and you are tuning in to episode 72, Category of One Clarity Part Do, as in two, but spelled D E U X, I think, French, Part Do. Hey, before I dive in today, I want to make sure you know about my free community. If you haven't already, head over to klcconsultants.com forward slash join, and you can check out a slew of really places to go, but ultimately subscribe for some free resources, guides, and all kinds of up-to-date value delivered directly to your inbox each week. I'll link up the show notes to this link as well. If you're on your phone, you can just scroll right down and get access with one click. So listen, last week I shared part one of a recent interview in which I was a guest of Dr. Tiffany Hall, Chief Growth Officer at Aesthetic Record on her podcast, For the Record. And I really did have a fun time chatting with Tiffany and sharing what it was like to transition from corporate America to consulting to now the really running and leading these powerful coaching programs that I have the honor of working with some of the industry's most ambitious and brilliant and successful business owners and practice managers in. And we took a stroll down memory lane back to some of the challenges I faced along the way and really the catalyst for igniting my passion to step into a category of one in my own market and to be the partner and guide for other dynamic thinkers who were on a mission to disrupt the status quo. If you haven't checked out episode 71, be sure to go back and catch the first part of this two-part episode, or two-part series, I should say, episode series, whatever you want to call it. So today we'll dive into part two, where we will really dig a little deeper into how to lean into your brand identity to showcase your unique essence as a business and business owner by leveraging a marketing differentiated experiences that patients will have when they come to you, B, developing proprietary treatment bundles to beat commoditization by marketing outcomes versus the tools you will use to achieve those outcomes, and C, the secret sauce, as Tiffany would call it, to world-class hiring and building a team that will help you achieve your very most ambitious goals. If you have been in business for at least one to three years, you've got the basics down, you know how to attract the right type of patient, but are looking to create a model to capitalize on that traction you've made, you will absolutely love this episode. All right, leader, enjoy the episode and I'll see you on the other side. Hi there, welcome to the Fierce Factor Podcast. I'm your host, Kaylee Lindholm. And I think it's time for us women to shift the conversation in business and step into our feminine leadership to do the most iconic work the aesthetic industry has ever seen. Each week, I'll be bringing a powerful dose of strategy, sarcasm, solutions, and sass that will rev up your creativity and ignite your brilliance as you link arms with me along our shared path of personal and professional growth in 20 minutes or less. Let's go. You talked about, in essence, sort of our hands are tied. We can only do certain things, but it brings up the word commoditization or commoditizing things. I think our industry, because we have grown so fast, things become commoditized. They become non-differentiating anymore. They become like even the word Botox, right? It's not special anymore because we use it generically, like we use Google or Bing or Kleenex, whatever else it is. So one of the things you are talking about that's a big part of my heart that I love dearly, one of my favorite topics, when you mentioned this talk, I was like dancing inside my soul. So you're going to talk about really beating out with commoditization, like taking that and throwing it out of the window and making it unique, making it your own for your practice. Give us some like quick tips on that. So we're going to come to the workshop and hear more, but give us some quick ideas about how to like knock out the commoditization problems. Yeah, I love that to the point of a lot of our clients offer the same treatments and services. That's the reality. At the same time, there isn't really one, one modality, one treatment option that's really going to address all of patients' concerns, right? And so it's a combination. It's putting treatments and services and all the things that you offer in essence. Sometimes it's 
an experience, you know, it's like, hey, we're going to put a warm lavender towel on you. It's all the things that really create that differentiated experience for the patient. That's your, becomes your secret sauce. And I think a lot of practices have that, but then they go market post school, <laughs> you know, and you're like, hey, but you have all these things and you're doing skin tightening. And so what I'm going to be teaching on is really creating these proprietary treatment bundles by putting together different types of modalities, including services and products that and experiences, right, that synergistically work to create a better outcome for the patient, a better result, but then marketing it as a package that is proprietary to your practice, right? So that it has your name on it. It Somebody can't call the place next door, right? And get the Tiffany Glow. You can only get the Tiffany Glow and we won't have such kitschy names. Like we'll come (laughs) up with some blur names, you know, in the spirit of being on the fly. You've got something that only you can offer. And so part of it's just identifying what that is and going through the process. I'm going to be teaching really tactically how to know what to actually bundle. And I don't mean just IPL with put skincare and all that. I mean, like, Again, going back to focus, what is going to actually, A, drive more business to your practice, create more demand for your services and build brand loyalty based on certain elements or indicators within your practice so that you know, what do I actually put together? And then I'm going to teach how to build those treatment bundles, how to price them, how to name them, and then how to market them. And just some tips about getting your team on board and and really leading with your philosophy and your mission instead of the products and services that you offer, right? Because what you offer is your brand promise and your solution to patient needs. So that's the, in a nutshell. So tell me about your love for for this topic. Boy, I could go all day. I'm not the guest here, but I'll give you a quick high level. I just looked at a practices website a few days ago and they have product names everywhere. And I'm a big, we call in technology a UI UX, user interface, which is like the actual thing that you're touching to do stuff. And then the user experience, how you journey through something using technology. And I'm like a patient coming in has no idea if they should be choosing Wrestling Lift, Juvederm, Radius. They have every name in the whole company and the whole world on this website. And the patient becomes a victim of analysis paralysis. They can't make a choice because like, I should know this answer and I don't, so I can't come here. I'm not good enough for this practice because I don't know what I should be getting. And they self-select out. If the practice says instead, a cheek pop, I'm using a kitchy name just to be like you, a cheek pop or a perfect pout or you know, an age eraser, whatever the words are that tells you what the outcome is going to be. I don't care what you use. I care that you give me that result at the end of the day, at the end of my $2,000 treatment that I'm going to have the age eraser thing done, whatever that thing is. And so for me as a patient in practices, but also as a person who sees their businesses from the backside, inventory wise, cost per the cogs on things, all of that, it just makes me crazy to say, stop marketing, stop doing the manufacturer's job for them. They're not doing yours. Don't do theirs. Market your practice and what you do that makes you unique because everyone Uh, has a pack shot from Rest and Lift. We all get a pack shot. We can Google it. We all get the ISI. We all get the marketing campaigns. And thank you for them putting it out because if you're a brand new practice, you don't have that yet, right? It's a huge benefit for you because you have nothing if you're brand new. But once you get your feet underneath of you, build your own your own world, your own branded house, your own idea and market it, but make it your own. So it's just a hot button for me that I'm like, if I could just change one thing for people that seems so small, what about my accounting, my finance? Like, no, you've got to get patients in the door. Let's start there. Like, let's get your brand identified and they'll worry about the financing and the cogs and the back end numbers. And, you know, we have to have patients first. So that's my hang up. I'll get off the soapbox now and back to you. Oh yeah. No, I agree. I agree. There's definitely plenty of education to be had. <laughs> yeah, we I think we give customers, well, I shouldn't say customers, patients in our case, a lot of power when we put brand names out. If you're upset about patients saying, I want Disport or I want Revenus or I want whatever, we're the victim of our own crime because we're putting that name on our site saying you should be choosing a name. You should be choosing a procedure. And I use this example all the time, even in the podcast. You never go in and say, I want the striker knee implant. I want the striker, I want the MTF graft for my nasal reconstruction. No one knows what those things are. The surgeon says, I'm going to give you a brand new knee that works. Yay. I'm going to give you a brand new nose that looks great. Yay. We leave it at that. We don't tell them how to do their job because they're not advertising the name of the thing that enables them to do their job. They're advertising the result. And so I feel like we have gotten into this like very product focused thing in our industry that hurts our practices. It hurts their ability to grow and change and develop and and innovate. So guys, break out of that. There's a better end for you. Come to Kaylee's class and learn how to do it. 
that's the end goal here. Go to Kaylee's class and learn how to do it. Yeah, this is a, a very popular topic. And yeah, big impact in a short amount of time for sure. Well, as we kind of think through like the, the, the last step for me as in practice is like the hiring and the firing and the HR part of it, which is where leadership really takes hold. You've obviously grown a successful career very quickly. You've been in boardrooms, you've been ignored, you've had to stand up and do your own thing. And I think that hiring me would be terrible because I'm very combative, like you're wrong and I'm right, but I'll defend myself. I'll tell you why I think I'm right. But you know, I think about hiring in general, it's a hard, hard thing to do. How do you help practices prepare for that to find the right teammates, leaders, future leaders? What is your magic sauce for recruiting and onboarding? Well, essentially it comes down. I mean, it all starts for me with people. Our philosophy is start with who? It starts with the team. If you want a world-class business, you got to be surrounded by world-class people. And so we don't hire for positions. We don't teach hiring for positions. We teach hiring people for passion and alignment with your vision and your core values. So it starts with knowing what those are, Tiffany. And I think a lot of times we just start working, like we our business goes. And this is why I really the sweet spot to work with me is you've been in business one to three years, you know how to get patients and you start moving along and you're like, okay, I'm awesome. And so I'm successful, but what the heck now, how do I scale this? How do I continue to grow and find people that can work in alignment with these values that I've built, right? The problem is most of the time we don't start from the beginning by setting and really clearly articulating what the culture is that we want to build. We let the culture develop itself. And so we hire Susie because we were like, okay, she's cheap. She's someone knows her. She's available. 15 bucks an hour. I can do it. We'll just see how it goes. Right. And then Susie decides like, okay, well, this is the culture we're going to have. Well, you go ahead and operate and I'm going to answer the phone this way and I'm going to do it this way and I'm going to handle patient care this way and I'm setting... Okay, then hire more, right? And so it's not intentional. All of a sudden, we're three years down, your business is booming, right? You've got patient flow, you've got revenue, maybe you're profitable, but then you realize you have these systems that are disjointed and out of whack. You have Susie who's bossing everybody around and you can't hire more team members, right? And you sort of end up in this sort of like spiral of like, oh my gosh, I can't. And so it's really getting clear about who the person is. And then instead of worrying about their resume, you teach them how to do the job that you want them to do in each of the, in the role. And when you plan ahead in six months, I'm going to need this person because I've taken the work to like build my people strategy. I'm not rushing. If you put an ad out on Indeed and get 200 resumes, you're the problem, not Indeed. Okay. If 200 people think that they are an applicant and a fit for your job and your business, you have not clearly identified the type of person that's going to be the right fit for you. Okay. And so it's really starts internally. And this is something I'm extremely passionate about. I don't want to become a recruiter. I have great friends that do that. I think their job is going to be easier. And I think if you do work with anybody who's looking to help you find people, you coming to them with clarity around who the right fit is for your business is going to make that a lot easier. And then the actual job that they do, it's holding them accountable, performance reviews. And the other piece I would say, Tiffany, that sort of, I would say my magic, you know, the secret to what we teach, that is not a secret, is that 90% of the time, employers fire their employees for behavioral reasons right? Not because they weren't doing their job, right? It's like, oh, she was a bad egg. She had a bad attitude. She didn't fit with the team. She was apathetic about this. She just didn't care enough. She wasn't on board with the new philosophy or she's not, you know? And so building a job description and job accountabilities and key performance metrics for responsibilities for those employees that include behavioral expectations as well as the tactical expectations. So we expect you to convert this many of this or answer this many of this phone calls or respond to this many. And we expect you to have this kind of attitude and abide by our business manifesto. And this is how we operate. This is our culture. These are our values. If you're not living in accordance with our core values, you're not doing your job. And so we do a lot of that. It's a lot of backend stuff that we teach. Also a 4X principle, your employees should be producing four times profit minimum for what you're paying them. And so sort of like, what do we need them to be doing to be able to give them really clear direction about how they can help make the business money? And also it should be a win-win and you pay them whatever they need to make to be able to produce 4X profit for you. End of story. It's not about the number. Yeah. 
you can see I'm passionate about that. <laughs> well, I have a disruptive, to use our word for thought, that's going to be hated by, by millions, and I wish there were millions, <laughs> who are listening to me right now, is the idea of what you just said around behavior. So I do commission plan or compensation plans all day long for customers, consulting wise as well, I'll do them. And I have to, it's like nails against a chalkboard here about commission. Oh, we pay them commission, straight commission, commission on this, commission on that. And then in the same breath, like, but she has such a bad attitude. She's, we pay her a fortune and she's not nice to her customer. She's mean to me. Like, okay, but you're rewarding her for all of that. You're paying her a ton of money in commission with no financial tie or performance review tie to her behavior. So you're saying to her, we don't care what you do here and how you act. Here's all the money. So on a commission plan, you forget about the performance, like the subjective measure of, are they a good human? Are they good for your practice? Are they good for your brand? Good for your patients? And so, first of all, I hate commission. I think it's not the right way to do it. It should be productivity-based. And that's a multitude of metrics that all come together and converge into one formula, which I'm happy to help people with if they're curious about how to do it. But point being is that behavior matters as much as anything to me. If you have learning agility and you have the desire I can teach you how to do the job. If you've got good intent and you're, you know, to say in your heart, for lack of a better word, and good intent for our business and your vision aligns with mine, your goals, your character, I can teach you how to do the thing here. Wherever we are, whatever the thing is, but that whole like mindset, propensity to want to deliver and perform, that's a different skill set than saying, can you do the thing or not? Because to your point, I can teach the thing. I can't teach how to have like an eager, excited heart to be in this role. So as a person hiring, guys, I got to tell you, do not undervalue the cultural fit, the behavior and the practice, the guiding principles that you believe in. If they don't, if it doesn't feel good in your gut, it's not the right choice. Like there's just, I've learned, unfortunately, so many lessons on that as well, even here at Aesthetic Records. So I've been battle tested, Kaylee, battle tested for sure. Well, it's just like a patient calling your practice asking how much is Botox, right? It's the same thing. It's the easy question to ask. It doesn't mean that they really care how much it is. It doesn't mean that Botox is what they need right? It's how do you handle that? And it's the same thing. I think we instantly jump to assuming that a commission is going to motivate an employee instead of doing the work to hire somebody who would be motivated, whether they were commissioned or not. And then putting incentives, whatever type of incentive you decide in place, maybe it's vacation time, really understanding your employee and putting incentives in place for driving behavior that is producing profit for the practice in their role. And so it's sort of flipped backwards. And I think it's sort of a question that I have. I did a really facetious podcast about that. Like what's the best comp plan to motivate an employee? There is no comp plan that can motivate an employee. They're either motivated or they're not. They either want upward mobility. They're either an entrepreneur or they're not. And so, yeah, I think it comes down to knowing what you need, starting with clarity (laughs) for yourself. And hiring somebody that is going to get go on that mission with you, it's not about a position. It really isn't. Well, if you guys are looking for more information on this topic, just as a total nerd science, look up the nine box grid. To Kaylee's point, are they going to be a steady eddy? Are they a person who has high potential? Are they a high performer? Because you'll see people who have a ton of talent, but have no desire. Or they have so much desire and very little talent. Like you have to figure out where they are on the matrix and help guide and coach them according to what that skill set is. Even your own co-leader, co-founder. You know, I look at co-founders who have the same problem. One of them is incredibly talented and one of them has incredible passion and they're not the same person. So together they kind of balance each other out, but they want different things from each other. It's like, wait a minute, I'm not as good as you. Well, you don't love it as much as I love it. There's like a, a give and take. And so sometimes it works out great when you have this sort of yin and yang thing because you balance. Other times it is really bad if you have a whole lot of talent and no passion or a whole lot of passion and no talent. You know, either way, it's not a good way to go. So I, but a nine box grid is something I like to do here at AR. I look at all of our employees all the time to think about hiring and, and motivating and who needs a kick in the butt, who needs, a, you know, some more praise. So it's one of my things. But you also said hire for who? That book, Who Not How, is a game changer. Kaylee, people always say you hire for the position, not the person, but you believe opposite. Give us a quick thing on that because I am, you're changing my mind about the who, not how for sure. <laughs> Good. I'm a big believer. You put someone's name on the job, like Sally, Joe, not the real person. So you can like think about it objectively, but I agree. I'll put a job together for anyone who I think is good talent. So I'm off for that too. Well, as a kind of wrap up and wind down here, I do want to mention your podcast. Guys, go follow Kaylee's podcast. She is the host of The Fierce Factor, which is really all about all the things disruptive. And you're interviewing some crazy and exciting, fun guests. I love listening to your podcast. I've learned lots of fun things. But give us a quick little overview about what's the vision for that and the goal for that and 
why we should go out right now to Apple Podcasts and follow your podcast. So this was my passion. And I really like for the first year, I didn't look at any numbers. I didn't want to know view listenership or I just wanted to be have a platform to speak my piece, to say how I felt, to share my philosophy. And it's really for it's geared for women in aesthetics. Plenty of men listen to it. So you're not disincluded if you're a male, but the inspiration for this was just looking at the impact that women have are making in our industry. The ASAPs data showed that we did 9 billion last year. Top two procedures on the non-surgical side were injectable and fillers. And look at all these nurse injectors, like you're seeing at Aesthetic Next, who are like, hey, I want to get in the game, right? Great nurse injectors are trying to train new people. It's this and women are really a big part of, I mean, a huge part of, and I honestly couldn't pull any numbers. We're really under-researched, I think underserved and misunderstood in the industry. And I think we approach our business differently. And a lot of it has to do with the way that we were emotional. We like to collect a lot of feedback from people. And so we have a hard time making decisions. I mean, you and I know, I think probably to climb the corporate ladder, you have to really insource approval. You have to be able to look inside and, hey, I believe in myself. I trust myself. I believe in my ability to do this and make this decision. And so I wanted to create a space where women in our industry could go to not just get tactical information, because there's that too. I'm getting ready to record this week on, you know, the sweet spot for wait lists. Like when does that work and not work? I talk about things like proprietary treatment bundles and a lot of marketing strategies and things like that, but a lot of mindset, a lot about being fierce and tapping into that woman that you are inside who's capable of accomplishing anything and having vision and executing that. And so it's really all things aesthetics. And I interview really great inspirational people like you, Tiffany, who I think are just really shaking things up and have a lot to offer and and teach other providers in our industry. And there's practice managers who follow. And it's, I think, a really great fun spot where I get to share all my knowledge and the experience that I get to collect from the clients that we work with, the questions they ask and sort of how we troubleshoot scenarios in their businesses. So yeah, it's called The Fierce Factor. And I would say, go absolutely go take a listen. And yeah. And you guys will love it. Because I think what you're saying about women is so true. You know, we we have babies, we have to be the homemakers and go get groceries and we're wives and we're trying to be, I'm leaving this podcast to run to my little boy's school for popsicles with a principal. You know, we're doing a lot of different things and, and not that men aren't doing them too. I don't mean that, but our challenges often tend to be a bit different because, you know, a lot of us were emotionally compelled to do it differently than men, but we're translational, men are more transactional. There's so much research. My entire background, educational background is on the research of these kinds of topics. And it's baffling to see, you can look at, you know, at wars, at, at all kinds of events in history and see when women were in charge, men were in charge, not because it's good or bad, it's because it's such a different aspect of it or different change, different ideas. But there is a big part of that that I think we as an industry, we are female proud. We are very female heavy, very female dominant. And we need a place to come and be together. I think as we laugh about, you know, on my end of this fence here about women supporting women, like we don't support each other. We talk about this all the time. Like we hear it on phone calls. I'm like, yeah, but you went on Instagram and bash someone else. Like you say that, like you're you know, community and we love women and we're supporting each other. And then you go in the same breath and do something really crazy, but it's because we we forget that we're all in this together, I think, in, at some level. So I think it's brilliant what you're doing. And I, I think people should be listening to it. If they're not already, go right now and click the subscribe and start downloading episodes because you've got tons of them. You've got lots of fun ones too. I thought Lori Robertson was a great one. She was like race car driver, rock climber, trauma. She's amazing. I was so tired just listening. I was like, my God, I'm so tired just listening to her. But yes. Yeah, and also... I send out about a weekly email with freebie. I do all kinds of like free resources and some sarcastic, you know, laughy stuff and fun and entertainment also, but um, access to things like the research I'm doing. So you can go get hooked up with my podcast, some my freebies and subscribe for my list at klcconsultants.com forward slash join. And then you have access to all of that there. So, And those freebies can turn into big money. I, I love to get a free download. I'll say like, whoa, I just made a lot of money or that changed our business and it cost me nothing. And then all of a sudden you're compelled just like with the patients, guys. I'm compelled to now go to Kaylee for more things because her free article, her free ebook, her free white paper, whatever it is, made a difference for my practice. And so sometimes again, that Groupon could be a big one for you long term. I'll keep saying Groupon until I die over here. 
I just lost 15 listeners from saying the word Groupon twice in one podcast. But anyway, <laughs> so what's next for you? Give us you know, our final time here. What's the next big thing for you? Where is KLC going and where do we see you next? Yeah, so we're just, we're getting another high level expert coach and, you know, growing our team internally to just really go deeper with our academy and continue to catapult success. We're on a mission this year to help 100 inspiring and intentional women cross the next million dollar milestone in their business. And so it's really just diving deeper into the curriculum and the thought partnership, the community in our academy, and just doing enhancing it and taking it to the next level. So, you know, if you're one to three years into your business, you're at that point where you're like, hey, I'm busy. I want to. I'm looking for my mini me. I'm ready to take this, build a real business. And I want not just the tools, but the support, accountability, and community to help me do that and think big and realize my vision. Come over and check us out. And uh, this will be the place to help you do that for sure. When's the next, you call it PopCon, right? Like Comic-Con, but PopCon. When's the next big event? Yeah, I decided not to do one this year because I didn't want to do any virtual So we're going to do something next year, but it's going to be a little different. It's not going to be a big event. I'm actually moving toward smaller, more intimate application only type of style events to get better. I think better accessibility. I think it's sometimes it's about who's in the room. And so it's, we're making some pivots on that, but there will be one coming. So (laughs) stay tuned. I love that. Building like a cohort, almost like a cohort of like little masterminds all working together. I think that's a genius idea. Thanks. Yeah, we're excited. Well, guys, you can see Kaylee for sure at Aesthetic Next in September, which is like in two weeks. Oh my goodness. I don't even say that out loud. Holy cow. She'll be in both our workshop tracks. She's a fantastic 90 minute workshop all about building your million dollar business confidence about your brand, all the things discussed today. And then she also has a clinical track to talk around the really commoditization and trying to fight that, if you will, with the proprietary bundles and really marketing your differentiated strategy in your practice. So two awesome chances to see her. She'll be around all weekend long. So go say hi, go bend her ear and ask for some help and see if you guys can connect and she can come change your business too. Yeah, and I'll be on me hanging out. So come find me and introduce yourself. Give her a glass of wine and she <laughs> needs a vacation, I'm sure. So <laughs> we'll work the wine. <laughs> well, for the record, you have been a fantastic guest. You always inspire me to think more strategically and bigger and deeper and, and be better. So I appreciate the time with you today. And I look forward to seeing you in two weeks for sure. So again, give us your website one more time, your social media handle, how to find you and also how to get to your podcast. So on Instagram, my handle is my name, Kaylee Lindholm, K-A-E-L-I, Kaylee.Lindholm. And If you just go to the link there, there's that join link, klcconsultants.com forward slash join. And you check out my podcast on all major podcast platforms also through that link as well. And it's called The Fierce Factor. And thank you, Tiffany. And I'm excited to see you face-to-face in the IRL. I know. We'll see hopefully many of you who are listening as well. So here's your virtual hug, but I'll see you live in a real hug in just a few weeks. So thank you again. And guys, we'll have another exciting episode for you coming next week. Thanks, Kaylee. Thanks for listening to another episode of For the Record. This podcast is not intended to provide legal or medical advice. It's for entertainment, education, and information purposes only. For more information on this week's guest or to get started with Aesthetic Record, email us at info at aestheticrecord.com. Be sure to tune in next week for more fresh perspectives on disrupting the status quo and surviving in the aesthetics industry. Okay, leader, I hope you enjoyed part two of this interview with Dr. Tiffany Hall. And I hope to see you at the upcoming Aesthetic Next Conference, September 9th through 12th at the Omni Hotel in Dallas, Texas. I'll be presenting talks on creating proprietary bundles to beat commoditization and be hosting a powerful 90-minute workshop on building your million-dollar business confidence. So if you are planning to attend, please come find me, say hello, and I can't wait to meet you live. Thank you for joining me today, Fierce Factor. I will see you next week. Thank you for joining me for this episode of The Fierce Factor. If you enjoyed the show, please make sure you subscribe so you can automatically get new shows every week. I'd also love it if you left us a review. And come join the conversation online. If you're an aesthetic industry owner, operator, or leader, please join my free Facebook group, The Tribe of Fierce Aesthetic Leaders a community of ambitious, purpose-driven professionals who collaborate and share best practices for growth 
in business and life. I'm honored you tuned in.